literature of ancient Greece and Rome has affected art, religion, philosophy, science, mathematics, medicine, drama, and poetry. It has served as a basic model for the development of later European and modern literatures. Greek culture was very widespread in the Mediterranean world during the Hellenistic Age, 4th century to 1st century BC. Literary schools came into being. One of the greatest libraries of antiquities was located in Alexandria, Egypt. Alexandrian poetry concentrated on foreign customs, names of months, and local nomenclature. The Western classical tradition is the reception of classical Greco-Roman antiquity by later cultures, especially the post-classical West involving texts, imagery, objects, ideas, institutions, monuments, architecture, cultural artifacts, rituals, practices, and sayings. Philosophy, political thought, and mythology are three major examples of how classical culture survives and continues to have influence. Plato and Aristotle were two major Greek philosophical writers. Plato developed some aspects of Socrates' philosophy and expressed it in written dialogues. The philosophy was later called idealism. They are also literary masterpieces and they have certain qualities common to poetry and drama. Since the Greco-Roman is a mixture of Greek and Roman culture, it is influenced by the three greatest philosophers' words named Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Ever since this scum set up shop here, he's made me work twice as hard. So you say Simeus here is your enemy because he makes you work harder than you did before. Wasn't that enough to make any man your enemy? But an enemy is a man who does you evil. Isn't he? Any fool knows that. And a friend is one who does you good. Any fool knows that too. But what a fool does not know is what is good and what is evil. Now you make better vases and you work harder because of Simeon's competition. Do you not? Greek and Roman literature has affected literally every phase of societal intelligence over the years. The story of Orpheus and Eurydice is 2,500 years old, and its exact origin is not entirely known. From the first part of the story of Orpheus, we learn that no object a person has once desired from the depth of his heart will ever be lost. Even if the object of love that a person has once desired is in the deepest depth of the earth, where reason, but not the eye, can see it. Even then, it can be attained if he pursues it sufficiently. The next thing we learn is that in order to attain an object, the love element alone is not sufficient. But besides love, wisdom is necessary. It is wisdom which awakens in harmony and harmonizes with the cosmic forces which helps one to attain one's object. There is a saying that the one who possesses the knowledge of sound knows the science of the whole life. And this will be admitted by the wise ones of all ages and of all countries. The invoking of the gods by Orpheus was his coming in touch with all the harmonious forces which united together brought him that object which he wanted to attain. But the most fascinating part of the story is the last one, both as a picture and as to the sense. As Orpheus was proceeding, you read the scene following him the promise was that he was not to look back. The moment he would look back, Eurydice would be taken away from him. The meaning of this is that the secret of all attainment is faith. If the faith of a person endures as fair as 99 miles and 1 mile remains before gaining the object, even then, if doubt comes, attainment is no more to be expected. From this, learn a lesson, a lesson which can be used in everything we do, in every walk of life. In order to attain anything we need faith, and if faith is lacking, even if there is the slightest lack of faith in the form of doubt, 
it will spoil all we have done. Verily, faith is light and doubt is darkness. Orpheus and Eurydice Every time Orpheus plays his lyre, any object or living thing was in awe. He met a maiden named Eurydice and they loved one another. Eventually, they got married. But their marriage was only short-lived. For after the wedding, Eurydice got stung by a viper and died. Upon Eurydice's death, Orpheus mourned and mourned every day. So what he would do was to play his lyre to express his sorrow. Every object and every living thing around him felt sorrow that even the god Hades felt sorry. Hades, the god of the underworld, gave Orpheus the chance to get his wife with the condition not to look back at Eurydice while they were heading for the exit. Seconds before exiting, Orpheus felt doubt and looked back. Doing so, his wife was sucked back to the underworld, and again, Orpheus was sad and low. Eventually, Orpheus was killed by the Menads and was delivered into the underworld to be rejoined again with his love, Eurydice. So we have here the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. You know what's amazing about this story is that Orpheus was a god. I mean, he was. Um, not in terms of power, wisdom, or strength, but of music. And I, I think he's the greatest when it comes to music. Oh yes, even the gods of the Greek, of the Greek mythology can, can compare with this musical intelligence. But I guess when it came to his love life, I wouldn't think he was that much in doubt with greatness. Why? But why? Well, when he finally found the love of his life during, before their wedding, his bride was stung by, was bitten by a viper. viper. But, but if you will read the story, he was somehow lucky because um, at the story we find that women are in love with him because of his music. I mean, he has this capacity to court whoever he wants. But unfortunately, like what you are trying to tell me, that at the day of his wedding, the love of his life, or um, your your desi, was was beaten, and it was it is just so tragic, and that's the most unlucky part. In it. I mean. For you, what is the significance of this text? I mean, what makes this text or this story qualified for a classic? Well, I can only tell it's qualified as a classic because it is one of Ovid's originals, or original works. And as an original work of Ovid, it has been used as a basis for it has, the story has been used as a basis for most contemporary tragedies today, right? So, I think that's pretty much a reason, pretty much a legitimate reason for it to become a classic. And now, can you relate the story? Can you find any relevance of this story to today's times? You know, what? You know, being a classic, that is why I appreciate classic because if we can see the story if we if we can read the story again and again we find it very interesting why because until now we experienced that kind of scenario I mean it's true um, the story I mean he, he is brave for a man for a normal man who does only music I mean to go into the gates of the underworld, but 
that is the amazing part of it. And sometimes in our lives, you know, um, men are just willing to risk everything. But at the end, when they think that they are close enough, they are not really close enough. That sums up the story. The moment that when you think you're good enough, but your best wasn't really good enough.